taking care of me? You're my kid brother and you take care of me? Did you ever think about that? Huh? Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 mob hits in movies. You know who we are? We're associates of your business partner, Marcellus Wallace. For this list, we'll be looking at mob hits and movies that set the standard for the genre and some that even added new ingredients to the formula. This list is riddled with bullets and spoilers. Beware. Did we get this one right? Kiss the ring in the comments below. Number 20. David Kleinfeld, Carlito's Way. Carlito is a gangster with a code, and even his friends aren't immune to his vengeance. Let me ensure this court that I am through walking on the wild side. When his crooked lawyer and presumed friend David Kleinfeld attempts to sell him out to the district attorney, Carlito doesn't take revenge with his own gun. He merely empties Kleinfeld's own revolver so that when the mafia assassin tasked with killing him arrives, he'll be left defenseless. And that is exactly what happens when the policeman enters his hospital room with a delivery. That delivery, a bullet to the head. From my father, and my brother. Adios, counselor. This twist ranks it among the most thrilling scenes of its kind. Number 19. Mac Kiefer and Jim Frazier. Angels with Dirty Faces. Before he was the coolest man in American movies, Humphrey Bogart was just another low-level crook in a gangster flick. All right, don't let him out of your sight. I'll send Bugs down with a couple of the boys. After realizing they're planning to bump off him and his friend, notorious gangster Rocky Sullivan pulls a fast one on Bogart's crooked lawyer and his partner. After tricking them into spilling their whole betrayal, Sullivan, who's played by James Cagney, pumps them full of lead. Ah, uh, no you won't. You got your last chance and you take this with you. I never let go of those papers. All you had to do was bump me off. There's a reason Cagney became a legend of the genre. He's the epitome of a cool-headed, cold-blooded gangster with no tolerance for cowards or rats. Number 18. Seth and Old Seth. Looper. Ryan Johnson's futuristic sci-fi crime thriller features a time-bending twist to the genre. It will be instantly outlawed used only in secret by the largest criminal organizations. Mob assassins are sent back to the past to murder their younger selves once their career is over, thereby erasing their connection to the organization. Those who fail to do this pay the ultimate price. When hitman Seth is unable to close the loop on his younger self, his body begins to decompose right in front of him as he sustains the injuries being inflicted on his younger self in a past timeline. It's a gruesome and creative twist on the standard mob hit. He told me there's a new holy terror boss man in the future and he's closing all the loops. The Rainmaker. Number 17. The Duke and Slasher. Layer Cake. Some movie mob hits are operatic, even beautiful, some might claim. They remind us of the tragedy of organized crime, where people with loads of potential and unexpected compassion can become trapped in a life of crime. That's my family, Kate. It's not me. This next entry on our list is not that at all. In Lair Cake, the Duke and Slasher are two low-level crooks who find themselves caught up in drug running that's way above their pay grade. Da, domnule. I'm promise that I'm capul. Tai capul! The squabbling couple eventually pays for their inexperience when they are both shot mid-argument by an Irish gangster's bodyguard. Number 16. John Rooney, Road to Perdition This is not just a movie about the mob, it's about family and sacrifice. So it seems appropriate that its climactic murder scene is much softer and plaintive than the others on this list. As mob enforcer Michael Sullivan ambushes mob boss John Rooney on the rainy streets of Chicago, he is also killing the man who has become his surrogate father. I thought I was working for you, but I wasn't. You think I'd give up my son? Rooney stands still as his bodyguards die around him. The gunfire lost to the plaintive piano score. His emotional last words, I'm glad it's you, speak to the mob boss's certainty that his life would have always ended with a bullet. I'm glad at you.
Number 15, Sonny Lo Specchio, A Bronx Tale. When young Calogero meets Bronx crime kingpin Sonny Lo Specchio, he finds in the gangster a father figure and unexpected champion. So you must be pretty upset after the Yankees lost. Bill Mazeroski. I hate him. He made Mickey Mantle cry. Despite his illicit business dealings and Calogero's father's warnings, Sonny and Calogero form a tight bond. But as Calogero's father has always told him, crime doesn't pay. Like many a movie gangster before him, Sonny eventually pays for his sins with his life. All Calogero can do is watch as his mentor is murdered in the middle of a crowded bar by the son of a man Sonny once killed in broad daylight. The guy that killed Sonny was the son of the man that he killed eight years earlier in front of my house. Number 14, Fredo Corleone, The Godfather Part 2. The Godfather gave new meaning to the word family, but Part 2 shows how ugly things can get when family gets in the way of the family. I'm your older brother, Mike, and I was stepped over. That's the way Pop wanted it. It ain't the way I wanted it. I can handle things. I'm smart. When Michael Corleone realizes his brother Fredo has betrayed him, he gives the go-ahead for hitman Al Neri to carry out his own brother's murder. In a departure for the trilogy, the hit is not shown. Fredo and Neri are seen in shadow as they sit on a fishing canoe, and Fredo says a Hail Mary. Only the sound of a gun going off is heard as Michael watches. His transformation from all-American boy to cold-blooded crime lord that began in part one is finally complete. Number 13, Marky Trapman, Killing Them Softly. In this modern take on the mafia, Brad Pitt plays Jackie, a cold and detached assassin for hire who must find and kill the criminals responsible for robbing a high-stakes mafia-run poker game. Jackie is ordered to take out Marky, a mafioso whose death is deemed necessary to serve as a warning against future heists. Right up next to him, Kenny. A little bit ahead, put me right up next to him. Jackie rides up next to Marky at an intersection on a rainy night and shoots him through his car window. The scene is played in vivid slow motion, lingering on every bit of broken glass, every spent shell casing, and every spatter of blood. This guy wants to tell me we're living in a community. Don't make me laugh. I'm living in America, and in America, you're on your own. Number 12, Bernie Birnbaum, Miller's Crossing. The first time enforcer Tom Reagan is tasked with killing Bernie Birnbaum, a crooked bookie, he can't go through with it. Look at your heart. I'm praying to you. Look in your heart. When Bernie pleads with Tom to look into his heart and have mercy, Tom allows him to go free and pretends to his superiors that he did indeed carry out the hit as ordered. But when the supposedly dead Bernie returns with blackmail on his mind, Reagan won't make the same mistake again. They replay the failed hit in the woods, only this time when Bernie begs for his life, Tom is unmoved. Look in your heart. <laughs> Look in your heart. What hurt? Number 11, Sonny Corleone. The Godfather. Considered to be an all-time classic of the genre, The Godfather rewrote the rules of the 20th century mob movie. This would be right there. Come on. You just wait there. In what is arguably its most brutal and bloody scene, the eldest son of the Corleone crime family is gunned down at a toll booth. His assassins fire on him without mercy and we're forced to watch as Sonny Corleone exits the car and is riddled with bullets until his bloodied body finally gives out. The silence after the gunmen depart and shots of the destroyed toll booth give the violence an eerie and poignant punctuation mark. They shot Sonny on the causeway. He's dead. <sighs> Number 10, Spats Columbo and his crew. Some like it hot. At the climax of this gender-bending rom-com, an impromptu birthday celebration turns deadly. For he's a jolly good fellow, which nobody can deny. Okay. Spats Columbo and his crew are having a little trouble tracking down two witnesses to their St. Valentine's Day-inspired massacre. That's because the two have been disguising themselves in drag to perform with a traveling all-female jazz band. 
Before they can catch up with their targets, Spatz and his crew are gunned down in appropriately goofy fashion by a hitman hiding in a big birthday cake. When they say cake is bad for your health, they really aren't kidding. Number 9. Jimmy Hoffa, The Irishman The real-life disappearance of union organizer Jimmy Hoffa has been fodder for fictionalized portrayals of his life and death for decades. However, the details of his presumed murder at the hands of the Mafia vary wildly from telling to telling. I got here this afternoon. Russell had business in Port Clinton. I had to wait for him. He reminded me. I forgot. So we had to come, and as soon as we got here, I came right here to see you. In Martin Scorsese's The Irishman, his death is carried out by his friend Frank Sheeran, an enforcer for the Buffalino crime family. Even as Hoffa realizes a meeting with a Mafia Don is a setup, he never suspects his friend of being in on it. He literally doesn't see it coming when Sheeran shoots him twice in the back of the head. What sets the scene apart is Sheeran's subtle emotional response to murdering his friend. She stopped talking to me that day. August 3rd, 1975. Number 8. Tom Powers, The Public Enemy In the movie that made James Cagney a star, he plays Tom Powers, a ruthless bootlegger in Prohibition-era Chicago. I wonder what to do with so much dough. Ah, oh, yeah, it started. I'll make big shots out of you yet. A brush with death finds a hospitalized Tom promising his mother and brother he will give up his life of crime. Tom's mother is overjoyed, humming to herself as she makes her son's bed. Tom's brother Mike answers a knock at the door to find Tom standing on their doorstep. His dead body falls into the foyer, having been delivered by a rival gang looking for revenge. The film ends as Mike goes upstairs to tell their mother the news. It's a haunting scene, highlighting the emotional toll of a life lived in opposition of the law. Number 7. Brett, Pulp Fiction Sometimes a mob hit isn't about the result, it's about the execution. No pun intended. When Marcellus Wallace hires Jules Winfield to kill someone, it's not just a hit, it's a performance. Mm -hmm. This is a tasty burger. His menacing monologue to a double-crossing colleague includes disarming his victims with a polite conversation, taking a bite out of his Mark's burger, a slurry of insults, and crescendos with a spirited recitation of the Bible perfectly timed to coincide with his and his colleagues' hail of bullets. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. The nonplussed reactions of Jules' partner in crime, Vincent Vega, are just the icing on the cake. Number 6. Nikki and Dominic Santoro Casino. Nicky Santoro makes his living as the merciless enforcer for the Chicago Mafia's Las Vegas chapter. He's not just good at torturing and killing people, he seems to revel in it. That's my business. That's what I do. But if there's anything mob movies tell us, it's that those who live by the sword tend to die by the sword too. When Nicky and his brother Dominic become too big for their britches, the Chicago bosses send them a message in the form of a baseball bat and an open grave in the Nevada desert. Nicky never spared his victims any undue suffering, and his own assassins returned the favor. Number 5. Sonny Red, Donnie Brasco When Sonny Red and his two goons entered the dark basement, they were openly boasting about their plans to whack fellow gangster Sonny Black. Yeah, nothing like a surprise Sonny Black is gonna get. Yeah, that again. <laughs> Put one right here. You'll never know what hit him, that's too not. In a delicious twist of fate and irony, Sonny Black and his crew are waiting in the dark for them, having suspected their betrayal. When the lights come on, the shooting starts. What makes the scene so memorable is how it just keeps going. After the first round of bullets, the hitmen reload their gun as their victims cry in agony. It's just another day at the office for them. Call me. Go get Donnie. Number 4. Jimmy Malone. The Untouchables In Brian De Palma's The Untouchables, Maverick police officer Jimmy Malone is shown to be as hot-headed as any gangster. His Irish brogue and unorthodox methods earn him the respect of his new colleague, Prohibition agent Elliot Ness. But they also put him right in the sights of Chicago's most nefarious crime boss, Al Capone. I want him dead! I want his family dead! 
I want his house burnt to the ground. I want to go to the middle of the night. I want to piss on his ashes. Even the clever Malone falls for a bait and switch hit carried out by a decoy assassin who draws the officer out into the open where infamous gangster Frank Nitti is waiting with the machine gun. With his last desperate breaths, the dying Malone gives Ness the information to make a key arrest in Al Capone's organization. Number 3. Tommy DeVito – Goodfellas Tommy is one of the most volatile mobsters the movies have ever seen. What do you mean funny? Funny how? How am I funny? I'm not just... You know how you tell a story. We watch him go from a slick-haired young kid to a hot-tempered adult with dreams of making it big in the criminal organization he works for. But it's his hot temper that eventually does him in. After carrying out a rageful, unsanctioned hit on a made guy, Tommy is led to what he thinks is his own making ceremony, only to be met with an empty room and a gun to his head. It's the suddenness of it and the true grief of his friends afterwards that makes this scene so memorable. You know, we always called each other good fellas. Like you'd say to somebody, you're gonna like this guy, he's all right. He's a good fella, he's one of us. Number two. Tony Montana, Scarface. So many mob movies concern the struggle of immigrants trying to earn wealth and power in America. We're gonna be out of this place in 30 days. Not only that, but we got a green card and a job in Miami, man. Now are we made or are we made, man? That's never been more true or tragic than in Scarface. In one of the most quoted and parodied scenes in any gangster movie, crime kingpin Tony Montana finally goes off the deep end and earns the ire of his criminal colleague Sosa. When Sosa's henchmen raid his palatial Miami home, Tony does the only thing he can do. He grabs a grenade launcher. Say hello to my little friend! After taking out several of them, Tony taunts the surviving assassins as they riddle him with bullets. It's only after taking a shotgun blast from behind that Montana falls to his death. And even this, he does with style. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Salazzo and McCluskey – The Godfather the Godfather sees an idealistic, all-American boy transform into a cold-blooded mafia don who will go to any lengths to take care of the family business. It should have never happened. I'm gonna straighten everything out tonight. I don't want my father bothered anymore. The classic scene where Michael Corleone carries out the hit on Salazzo and McCluskey is the first step in that transformation. Loaded with suspense and intrigue, the scene follows Michael as he meets the men who ordered the hit on his father retrieves a gun planted in the bathroom, and shoots the men dead in the middle of a restaurant before fleeing. It's a masterclass in tension, even if it probably tanked the restaurant's Yelp score. You think too much of me, kid. I'm not that clever. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.